Unless you're an absolute glutton for punishment or a particularly anal completionist, chances are that you won't actively seek out every boss fight in a video game. Now, considering that most hidden and optional bosses are capable of feeding the player their own eyeballs in an instant, the majority of us would rather live in ignorant bliss than get turned into mulch. And sure, it's easy to gloss over optional encounters, but what about the ones that you simply skipped by accident? It's not a particularly common occurrence, but it can happen, and we've managed to collect 10 of them for you to Today. So with this in mind, I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 awesome video game boss fights you can accidentally skip. Number 10. Rodin – The Bayonetta Series the Bayonetta series is home to some of gaming's most ridiculous and challenging boss fights, but their most bombastic and downright grueling battles are somewhat hidden in plain sight, meaning that it's highly likely that many just simply skipped over them by accident. Because in both games, you have the chance to challenge Bayonetta's badass arms dealer Rodin to a showdown, but only once you shell out enough cash for it. In the original game, you have to fork over 10 million halos for the privilege of going toe-to-toe -to -toe with this cool cucumber, whereas in Bayonetta 2, you have to purchase the Golden Ticket which is locked behind a staggering 9,999,999 halos. It's a truly ungodly amount of in-game currency that will require an insane amount of grinding to obtain. It's likely that most players saw these items for sale within the armory and simply forgot about them, passing it off as not worthy of the sheer amount of effort it would take to amass such a bounty. In doing so, however, players missed out on what is undoubtedly the most challenging and rewarding battles that the Bayonetta series has to offer. So they're locked. I guess. Number 9. Morgan Freeman, South Park the Fractured But Whole South Park, The Stick of Truth, and The Fractured But Whole are both chock full of hilariously foul boss fights that push bad taste to new heights. The most unusual and soul-destroying of the bunch, though, is the battle against the magnificent Morgan Freeman, one that many seem to have skipped over in their initial playthrough. Upon entering Freeman's Tacos, a little taco shack run by Freeman himself, you're given the option to talk with him and he'll teach you the ways of crafting. But what the game doesn't clue you in on, however, is that Freeman is actually an optional boss. To activate the fight, you have to go behind the counter and hit him three times. Doing so invokes the rage of the honey-voiced legend and you're in for a world of hurt. This fight will really test your mastery of the game's mechanics and you'll need your party members firing on all cylinders in order to take him down. Now he may seem all nice on the surface, but Morgan will slap your team down in no time if you're not prepared for his onslaught of insanely punishing attacks, all of which can be missed if you don't fancy slapping a guy for no reason whatsoever. Number 8. Undeep – Lost Planet – Extreme Condition Capcom's Lost Planet series seems to have faded into obscurity as of late. The two titles that were released were the perfect blend of third-person action and bug-slaughtering mayhem, but unfortunately they never really got the love and attention that they deserved. Now, Fairly early in your trek across the frozen wastelands in the original game, you're confronted with a giant acrid worm known as the Undeep. Now, This nasty sod can literally consume you whole if you're not careful and will most likely succeed in doing just that because you won't be prepared in the slightest. So in most instances, players who saw all this slimy terror after being eaten once or twice would run for the hills, which in all honesty is what the game intends for you to do. But for those of us who enjoy a challenge, you can indeed take it on. You'll need to be sure that your aim is on point and your dodging skills are second to none, but it is possible to come out on top. It's an incredibly fun fight and something of an early game highlight if you manage to pull it off. If you do manage to defeat it, there's also an achievement in it for you as well. So get blasting, lads! Number 7. Laura – The Evil Within for those of us out there with an ironclad will and plenty of spare underwear, the Evil Within series offers some of the best bosses that horror gaming has to offer, with the most relentless of the bunch being the contorted mess that is Laura. After appearing several times throughout both games, she's seemingly impervious to bullets and anything that you can throw at her has little to no effect, so naturally most players opted to simply run away from her thinking that this is what you're supposed to do. But it turns out, however, that by running away you're missing out on one of the game's best and toughest bosses. Similar to Resident and Evil's nemesis, you can take her on, turning what was another tense chase segment into a full-on boss battle. But be warned though, she is one tough cookie. Her health pool is insanely large and her teleportation abilities allow her to cover great distances in no time at all. But with enough ammo, skill and luck, you can defeat her, but it will not be an easy battle. You're going to need an awful lot of shotgun, magnum or rocket launcher ammo if you want to stand a chance to make it out alive. Number 6. The Taurus Demon – Dark Souls 
Now, I know what you might be thinking. How on earth could you accidentally skip the second boss in the game? Well, gather round, kids, and let me tell you. After booting up Dark Souls and creating your character, you can select a gift item to take with you on your journey. These include firebombs, stat-boosting rings, or the incredibly useful Master Key. Now, if you choose the Master Key, you'll be unable to unlock several doors in the game's first area, including one that leads directly to the luscious and foreboding Dark Root Basin, which is a later game area. Now, said door is protected by Havel, who can pummel you into a fine pace if he catches you, but it's easy enough to slip by him and out the door. Some players have reported that they inadvertently took this route upon their initial playthrough and completely missed the Taurus Demon, only encountering him much later in the game when they were backtracking to hoover up optional content. It's also worth noting that if you choose the Thief class, you're automatically gifted the Master's Key by default, meaning that those with sticky fingers are even more likely to avoid this horny terror. All right there, geezer, it's Jules here from FGS, also known as the Future Game Show, and I've got a special announcement for you, because you see, tomorrow on June the 10th at 6pm BST, the Future Game Show is going live with their June event. There's going to be world premieres for trailers of video games that you've never seen before, there's going to be a VR showcase, and it's going to be hosted by none other than Yuri Lowenthal and Laura Bailey. You know, the voices behind Marvel's Spider-Man? How's that not going to be fun? But that's not all because I will actually be live reacting to the event over on TikTok. I'll be streaming over there with my pal Josh, so why not consider going and following us over there on FGS on TikTok, and while you're there, you might as well go over to the YouTube channel as well, where it's FGS, and you can see all of my gaming content that I put out every single week. Hope to see you over there. Let's have a laugh. Peace. Number 5. Tyrant Final Battle Resident Evil in the grand scheme of things, skipping out on one of Resident Evil's hellish boss encounters would be considered a blessing, but in this instance, it's actually the worst possible scenario that you could hope for. The several endings that the original Resident Evil had to offer were completely based upon choices and actions that you made during your hellish journey through the Spencer Mansion. If you made all of the wrong decisions, it results in skipping the game's final boss fight. If players didn't save the right character or allowed others to perish whilst making their mad dashes to freedom in the game's climax, they'd miss out on this battle. And it's truly a shame if this happens, because the climactic battle with the hulking monstrosity on the helipad is arguably the coolest and most satisfying section of the entire game. But what makes it even worse is that by skipping the tyrant fight, you'll receive the game's worst endings, which typically sees your player's character as the sole survivor out of the ordeal and the tyrant set loose into the woods to wreak havoc upon all those that cross its path. Sad times all round. Number 4. Cyclops – Castlevania 3 – Dracula's Curse it's no secret that the classic Castlevania games are not for the faint-hearted. The tight platforming coupled with a consistent onslaught of tough enemies makes them some of the most challenging and rewarding retro games on the market, so much so that people would jump at the chance to bypass any of the game's ridiculously hard boss fights. Well, the good news is, is that you can, if you decide to, when firing up Castlevania 3's Dracula Curse, do just that. Halfway through Stage 3, you're presented with a fork in the road that lets you choose which path that you'd like to go down to continue your quest which seems awfully suspicious at first glance. If you choose to go left, you'll continue right on through the rest of the stage and do battle with the stage's boss, the towering Cyclops. But if you choose to go right, however, you immediately jump straight into stage 4, completely skipping the fight against the one-eyed monster. Now, Jumping straight into stage 4 will save you a load of stress, but the Cyclops battle is incredibly fun and really worth doing if you want to experience Castlevania 3 the way the developers had intended. Still though, a weird choice to have, right? Number 3. Your Rival – Pokemon Red, Blue and Yellow Throughout your journey in the Kanto region, you'll have several run-ins with your rival, who we'll just call Gary for the sake of ease, but I think that we all prefer to call him something a little more vulgar. Mine was Spunk Nose. Each of these scripted encounters with him acts as a test of the skills that you've developed over the course of the game. These fights are never usually too much trouble, but they can catch you off guard if you've not put in the extra training time. What some players may have not realized, however, is that it's possible to skip one of the numerous scripted battles against him. This is accomplished by not exploring Route 22 when you first reach Viridian city. In doing so, you'll completely bypass this encounter and continue on your journey without having to see a smug little face. In the red and blue versions of this game, skipping the fight only results in missing out on a hearty dose of EXP, whereas in Pokemon Yellow, it can actually alter his final lineup when you challenge him at the tail end of the game, which does make for an interesting deviation from the game's usual final bout. Number 2. The Moon Presence – Bloodborne 
You've finally done it. After hours and hours of grueling combat and taxing exploration, you were ready to lay some serious smackdown on the final boss, German. It was touch and go for a second, but yes, you managed to slay him, and the game is over. You've finally beaten it. Or so you thought. Upon a first playthrough, it's not made clear that you need to actually go beyond German, because after him lies the Moon Presence, a celestial being and bringer of all the nightmares that have plagued you on your journey throughout Yharnam. Accessible only once you've found and consumed three umbilical cords, gross I know, which are hidden away in some of the game's optional areas. The Moon Presence will then appear immediately after you've defeated German, giving you no time to restock your supplies. In comparison to Bloodborne's other boss encounters, the Moon Presence is fairly easy to topple, provided you haven't burnt through all of your ammo or, or blood vials in the previous battle. Slaying this creature gives you access to Bloodborne's good ending, which uh, I, I use the term good with a question mark there because it's up to you to decide if it actually is or not. Either way, its inclusion adds a whole load more depth and intrigue to Bloodborne's already engrossing narrative. And number one, the Marquis de Bouillon, Assassin's Creed Unity. Who would have thought that the best and most challenging boss fight in Assassin's Creed Unity would be contingent on players scoffing down a load of cake? In specific spots all around Paris, you can find extravagant tiered cakes that your character can chow down on. At first glance, it just seems to be a fun little Easter egg, but if you find and interact with all five cakes, one Marquis de Bouillon will make his appearance known. Once you've had your fill on spongy goodness, a giant cake will spawn in the garden of the Luxembourg Palace. Standing atop this cake is the man himself poised and ready to slap you silly for being a greedy pig. And slap you he will, because make no mistakes, this guy is incredibly difficult to take down. It's possible that most players only found one or two of the cakes, or didn't put enough stake in seeking all of them out, and therefore skipped over what is arguably one of the best boss battles this game has to offer. Either way, we highly recommend going back to Unity and filling your face with cake, because this is one boss battle that is worth all the extra effort and the slightly expanded waistline. And there we go, my friends. Those were 10 awesome video game boss battles that you can accidentally skip. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.